Hey, and welcome to uh, Monday's edition of uh, You Down with MMT. I'm still doing uh, readings from the book you see on your screen, so let's get to it. Uh, chapter 18, The Phillips Curve and Beyond. In this chapter, we, put, we build on the analysis presented in the previous discussion about the inflation, which is in chapter 17, and introduce the Phillips curve in the immediate post-World uh, Second World War uh, Keynesian era, the concept of full employment was defined as the availability of sufficient jobs to match the preferences of the available labor force. Accordingly, as full employment, uh, no worker who wanted to work would be involuntarily unemployed. This post-war consensus was steadily eroded away over the last 30 or so years. By the, end, uh, by the early to mid-1970s, mainstream macroeconomics uh, reverted back to the pre-Keynesian notions of voluntary unemployment and effectively abandoned the concept of true full employment. However, the process of abandoning true full employment began in the 1950s, when the discussion turned to, turned to two evils of unemployment and inflation. This was the era in which the Phillips curve literature emerged, based on what was then considered to be a statically I guess, reliable uh, inverse relationship between unemployment and inflation, the so-called trade-off between unemployment and inflation. I think, they, I think that word is uh, stati statis statistically. Statistically, there we go. That's okay. Anyway, uh, anyway. So, however, later monetarist and new classical uh, reinterpretation of the trade-off appeased and became the dominant view as the neoliberal free market school of thought took center stage and further moved economics away from the coherent notion of full employment. Classical or pre-Keynesian notions of a natural unemployment rate are equated with full employment were revived, which led to the rejection of the demand management of policies that, yeah, uh, that aim to limit unemployment to its fr uh, frictional component. In this chapter, we, do, we will carefully analyze, ana analyze the Phillips curve and how the idea that there might be a trade-off between the twin evils of unemployment and inflation has changed with the, the augmentation of the Phillips curve. With, inflation, with, with inflationary expectations and then so-called natural rate of, of unemployment. Since the early 1970s, ide ideological, ideolo ideological dominance in, a, in this debate has been assumed by those who would skew the intervention of government and consider that the unfettered operation of the market will generate full employment. The persistence of mass unemployment around the world is a testament to the error of their thinking. Be right back. If you're going to go after the rich and the oligarchs, then you've essentially agreed to their terms, which is if you want a little bit more of our wealth to have your little Medicare for all and all of the other social programs, then by definition, we need to have the capacity to generate even more wealth and power and influence so you can tax a little bit of it to have your little Medicare for all. So you've agreed to their position of power, to their terms of the debate, and you've just agreed to make them more powerful, more influential, which means you've agreed that they will not give you what you want.
Welcome back. Uh, we continue on with the chapter 18. Uh, finally drawing on empirical evidence, we develop a model of inflation that exploits the concept of high, 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 high trust to justify the restoration of a trade-off between the inflation rate and broader measure of labor uh, utilization. Uh, this approach supports the MMT and post-Keynesian view more generally than the government has an important role to play in maintaining low levels of unemployment. Uh, On to 18.2 or section 18.2, the Phillips curve. In chapter 16, we derived what we define as the aggregate supply function or uh, figure 16.3, page 247, uh, which was reverse L-shaped. The horizontal segment was explained by the price markup rule and the uh, assumption of constant unit cost over a range of output. In other words, firms in aggregate are uh, assumed to supply as much real output or goods and services as it demanded at the the current price level up to a limit defined by available capacity. The aggregate supply function becomes vertical at full employment because beyond that point, the economy exhausts its capacity to expand short run output due to shortages of labor and capital equipment. Firms will then try to outbid each other for already full employed and labor resources and in doing so will drive money wages up. Under normal circumstances, the economy will rarely approach the output level or Y, which means that the economy is usually faces constant, uh, constant cost. We acknowledge in uh, we acknowledged in chapter 16, however, that rising uh, rising costs might be encountered uh, at a lower level of aggregate output, given that all firms or sectors are unlikely to hit full capacity simultaneously so that cost pressure would begin to amount before the overall full capacity output was reached. Thus, the reverse L-shaped aggregate supply curve represents an analytical uh, simplification it was considered plausible that inflationary pressures uh, rise in inverse proportions to the un unemployment rate, which was taken to be a proxy for overall health of the economy. While earlier researchers had studied this relationship, it was not until 1958 that New Zealand economist Bill Phillips uh, published a, st a statistical study that showed the, uh, ration, uh, the relationship between the unemployment rate and the rate of change, growing rate of money wages for the UK in the middle, uh, in, in the period of 1861 to 1957. Phillips curve, uh, Phillips believes, excuse me, that since money wage costs represent a high proportion of total cost movements in money wage rates would drive movement in the general, general price level. Later, economists constructed the relationship as being between the rate of price inflation and the unemployment rate. In the Phillips curve framework, the level of economic activity is represented by the unemployment rate. So the model linked the level of economic activity to changes in the price, price level. Therefore, when the unemployment rate rises above some uh, reducible maximum econ economic activity, declines and wage pressures decline. Conversely, as the unemployment rate moves towards the uh, uh, irreducible uh, maximum, the or minimum, uh, the economic, the economy moves closer to the full capacity of uh, utilization and full employment and wage pressure escalates. Uh, figure 18.1 shows a stylized Phillips curve. Uh, terms with the, within the equation, so the so that important uh, imports appear in aggregate expenditure exp uh, expression, which a negative sign. Oh, sorry, with a negative sign. On the other hand, a constant or intercept term appears with a positive sign that that may 
be positive or negative. And this nonlinear spe uh, specifications and uh, specification, the U term uh, appears with a positive sign and by convention uh, parameter, uh, it looks like a B is positive. We noted in chapter 17 that when money wages grow in line with labor productivity, there are, will there will be no inflation, inflationary pressure pressures coming from the labor market. In other words, price inflation are holding uh, other cost factors constant will be equal to the growth in money wages minus labor productivity growth. Then the price inflation equation equation can be written as a simple uh, specification is in the linear terms to the money wage. Phillips curve is a uh, written is written as um, where B is now the sensitive sensitivity of the growth of money wages it to changes in the unemployment rate. Then the expression for the price Phillips curve can be written as where again A equals A uh, minus Y uh, is uh, lower than zero, but A is higher than zero. This also tells us that the rate of general price inflation will be higher, the lower is the unemployment rate and the lower is the productivity growth. If you look at equations 18.2 and 18.4, you can see the, uh, the each specification has an excess demand term related to the rate of unemployment and a uh, constant term. Now the 18.2 has uh, P equals W minus Y equals A plus BU uh, minus Y equals A plus BU. Just BU, no. Um, where uh, A equals A minus Y is uh, lower than zero. Or my, or yeah, not, I just, you know, uh, my, my zero is up to that effect. In 18.3, uh, the equation uh, says couple W equals A uh, minus uh, B and U, uh, B is greater than uh, zero, where B is now the sensitive of the growth of money wages to changes in the unemployment rate, then the expression of the, uh, the price, uh, price Phillips curve can be written as, uh, which is in 18.4, uh, capital P equals a minus B U. Anyway, so let's see. Uh, this is also tells us the rate of general price inflation will be higher. The lower, uh, the lower is the unemployment rate, and the lower is the productivity growth. If you look at equation 18.2 and 18.4, you can see that each specification has an excess demand term relating to the rate of un unemployment and uh, and a constant term. Next one is uh, the instability of the Phillips curve. Consider uh, figure 18.3, which shows the combinations of the unemployment rate and the annual price inflation rate for the U.S. from 1948 to 2015. The uh, logarithmic, the logarithmic represents a uh, repression, excuse me, um, between the inflation rate and the unemployment rate has been blotted for the three sub periods, 1948 to 69 and from 70 to 80 and from 81 to, to uh, 2015. The regression line for the period 1948 to 69 fits the data, uh, the data quite well and shows a simple, Phillips curve trade-off of the uh, the tip the type depicted in 18.2. However, considering the observations for the 1970 to 1980, the uh, those data are clearly inconsistent with the stable Phillips curve and seem to imply a positive slope rela relationship. <clears throat> Excuse me. This apparent shift of the Phillips curve was considered to be a lapse in the relationship and led to uh, accusations that the yeah, accusations that the underlying conceptual, conceptualization of the Keynesian Phillips curve was flawed. By 1980s, when inflation moderated, it became hard to determine any relationship between inflation and unemployment in the U.S. economy. 
from an empirical perspective than the belief that the Phillips curve was a stable relationship which could be exploited in a, in a predictable manner by policymakers according to their pre preferences between inflation and unemployment had begun or become highly questionable. We all we always have to be the very uh, be very careful where the where we visualize data in this way. First, the ch the choice of data for the different periods is important. Second, the observation uh, observations between seventy and eighty may in fact signify a shifting Phillips curve relationship, and the re regression line is just picking up the shifting function. However, for the trade off. Uh, to be empirically sustained, it is necessary to uh, is necessary for consecutive annual observations and def define a uh, to define a trade off via e uh, economic yeah uh, econometric uh, est est estimation and a rational need uh, ra sorry a ration yeah rationale needs to be provided as to whether or not the trade off is a shifting is shifting excuse me the idea of stagflation that learner advanced in the early 1950s see chapter 17 but also helped to understand the empirical instability in the phillips curve that, that began to manifest in the late 1960s and led to a major shift in macroeconomic thinking okay so we have uh, econ metric uh, mis mis specifications it was shown that the Phillips curve became, became unstable uh, or moved around in the uh, late 1960s. It was uh, particularly uh, susceptible to sudden and or large increases in inflation. The econometrically uh, estimated consumption function or functions in the large macroeconomic policy models that were popular in the 1960s also became unstable in the 1970s. Some economists successfully showed that the failure and uh, failure of the large scale um, econ, econ metric metals uh, maintained by governments and central banks in the early 1970s to forecast variables such as savings and consumption could be traced to the mystification of the consumption function. Uh, most of these models signify the possibility that, raise, that, that rising inflation would influence consumption. For example, if consumers expect uh, prices to um, rise quickly in the function or future, they may be and uh, they may bring forward consumption decisions. The breakdown of the Phillips curve in the late 1960s demonstrated that another eco ecometric function had been misspecified mis because it ignored the possibility that rising inflation might become self-fulfilling as workers and firms sought to protect their real wages and real profit margins. This meant that inflationary expectations term would have been included in the equation. It is a fact, though, that, main, that the mainstream Keynesian consensus in the 1960s was abstracted from the potential instability rooted in the institutional nature of wage and price setting. Instead, policymakers pursued the attractive notion that they could permanently maintain low unemployment as long as they ensured that effective demand was sufficient given the government, non-government sectors, saving plans, and uh, any demand leakages from net exports. Another reason why the discussions about instability were largely ignored is that the textbook model of the curve, Phillips curve, was very attractive to its uh, simplicity. In its simplicity, excuse me. Textbooks typically stylize discussions and uh, it's few complicated stories for the sake of pedagogy, 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 and some of that. <laughs> I'm not sure what that, what that word means, but whatever. Um, we have taken care to resist this tendency in, a, in this text. We consider a rich treatment of institutions and history in history to be an important part of learning macroeconomics. Uh, 18.3. 
the acceler accelerationist uh, hypothesis of the expectations argument, Phillips curve. Oh, sorry, not argument, augmented <laughs> Phillips curve. Uh, introduction. The legacy of the early Keynesian versus classical debate persisted through the 1950s and 60s. The neoclassical school was unwilling to accept the basic insights provided by Keynesian that effective demand drives output and national income and that ca ca capitalist monetary system is susceptible to crises of overproduction and unemployment. In the late 1960s, the ongoing debate about the, different, the effectiveness of fiscal and monetary policy is stabilizing the economy. The cycle was in, revised within the Phillips curve framework. A group of economists centered at the uh, university, yeah, centered at the University of Chicago, were supposed to govern what uh, was opposed to government attempts to maintain a full employment. This argument uh, largely reflected their belief that a self-regulating free market would generate optimal outcomes. Thus, they were inherent adherents of the neoclassical model that considered most government intervention to be uh, problematic. See the discussion of the orthodox neoclassical approach in chapter one. This debate at the macroeconomic level was manifested in demands for widespread deregulation in product, labor, and financial markets, and a, a major reduction in the size of government. At the macroeconomic level, the Philip curve was the, con uh, the contested ba uh, bond battleground. During the stable Phillips curve policy era, uh, policymakers assumed that they could target a low unemployment rate and incur a modest inflation rate as consequences. As a consequence, the extent to which inflation rose was determined by the slope of the uh, Phillips curve, which was considered to be relatively low. So the Phillips curve you would you was close to being uh, flat. The emerging, uh, the emerging Chicago uh, uh, monetarist uh, who eschewed government intervention changed or challenged that view and asserted th that there was no permanent or long run trade off between inflation and unemployment. They claimed uh, that ultimately the market would ensue uh, unemployment stabilized as around its so called natural rate and that. Any attempts by government to push unemployment below this rate would lead to accelerating inflation. Chicago economist Milton Friedman was the most vocal monetarist and in a famous article in 68 outlined what became known as the uh, accelerate, accelerationist hypothesis. Uh, expectations of inflation, box 18.1. Uh, expect, expectations of inflation and our historical note, the English economist, author uh, Joseph Brown published the Great Inflation in 1955, three years before Phillips came out with his work. Brown not only uh, foresaw the instability of the wage unemployment relationship, but also recognized that the development of a wage price spiral is dependent on the uh, quote, aims of the two parties who are competing for the real income of the country or their success in achieving those aims, unquote. Uh, this, you know, this was reminiscent of the literature we examined in chapter 17, which depicts the inflation process as a result from incompa uh, incompa incompatible claims on total nominal uh, income by workers and firms. Brown also understood in making these claims that the, un the antagonist form expectations of future price movements. For example, workers want to protect the real uh, equivalent of their wage incomes and make money wage demands accordingly. As seen in 18.1 box, the introduction of the so-called expectation augments uh, Phillips occurred by Freeman in 1968 did not represent a sudden new discovery that expectations of inflation and wage adjustment are important. Rather, the emergence of promotion of the model can be seen as the culmination of, the, of a long campaign by Freeman and others to restore the, the quantity theory to the status it had prior to the Keynesian Revolution. 
Friedman and Edmund Phelps, who is in 1968 has also authored an important paper incorporating expectations into the Phillips curve, has thus wrongly given have been given the credit for the introduction of expectations into Phillips curve and raising the, the raising the issue of the of its, uh, stability. However, it was the empirical instability in the relationship between unemployment and inflation that opened the way for the so-called monetarist paradigm in the macroeconomics to gain uh, ascendant, ascendancy. The monetarist re reinterpreted the inflation slash unemployment trade-off by adding the role of inflationary expectations. And in doing so, revived the classical or pre-Keynesian notion of a natural unemployment rate different, defined as equivalent to, un, to full employment. The devastating consequences of this assertion was the rejection of a role for demand management policy, uh, policies to reduce unemployment to its frictional component. The Keynesian had adopted the Phillips curve and macroeconomic relationship, yet they had developed a very, very little uh, macroeconomic theory to underpin it. They just uh, justify the Phillips curve as a competitive adjustment process, such as if there were, if there was growing demand for uh, labor, money, uh, money wages rose as employment fell, unemployment fell. But monetarists claim that workers cared about real wages rather than nominal wage because the real wage represented a worker's capacity to buy goods and services. Thus, the original Phillips curve was defective because it, because it only focused on the relationship between percentages, percentage changes in money and wages and the unemployment rate and ignored the influence of changing prices level on expectations about inflation. The, acceleration, the accelerationist hypothesis was advanced in 1968 by Milton, by Milton Freeman before the empirical breakdown of the relationship between inflation and unemployment merged in the early 1970s. So while the Phillips curve presented the monetarists which are with the opportunity to debate the failings of the mainstream Keynesian analysis, it was the subsequent empirical havoc created by the 1970s oil prices shocks that added weight to their theoretical arguments, which were later shown to be deficient, see below. Um, the, 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 uh, anyway, <laughs> the, mis, uh, the misspecification of the early Phillips curve, which had ignored inflationary expectations, was not uh, significant while inflation was ne negligible, negligible. Once inflation rates soared worldwide, and, uh, worldwide as oil prices soared in the early 1970s, the Phillips curve relationship be uh, broke down. As a result, the monetarist concept of a natural rate of an unemployment appeared to be validated, along with the rejection of aggregate demand management through uh, fiscal policy. There were uh, two basic propositions that Freeman asserted in his attack on the Phillips curve. First, he claimed that there is a natural rate of unemployment, which is the, which is determined by the underlying structure of the labor market and the rate of capital formation and productivity of growth. He believed that the economy always tends to move back to, the, to that level of unemployment, even if the government attempts to use fiscal and monetary policy expansion to reduce unemployment. He noted that natural rate of unemployment uh, is now uh, immutable and unchangeable, but is insensible to monetary or aggregate demand forces of Friedman. In other words, he argued that increasing nominal aggregate demand would not reduce the natural rate. He also claimed that, oops, oops. Uh, he also claimed that the natural base rate is bought, both uh, man-made and policy-made. Friedman uh, for, Example, monetarists argue, uh, argue that imposing minimum wage wages and providing unemployment benefits would increase the, the natural rate. The concept of the natural rate of unemployment that Freeman developed follows from the analysis of the classical labor market. We briefly summarize the, argu the arguments here while a detailed discussion of classical theory can be found in chapter 11. The monetarist approach was an attempt to restore the legitimacy of the ideas that Keynes de demolished in the 1930s. 
Friedman asserted that the real wage uh, wages rather than money wages are the relevant object of concern from the prosperity uh, perspective rather of uh, firms and workers. Workers supply labor based on the opportunity co uh, cost of leisure, which is the income given up by an extra hour of leisure. That is the real wages, per, uh, real wage per hour on the uh, period. Uh, on the other hand, firms employ labor to maximize profits so that also the demand for labor's uh, labor is also a function of the, the real wage it was argued that the real wages would adjust to assure that the labor market clears at uh, clears at the natural rate level of unemployment that, that is the demand for labor equals the supply of labor while other, while there might be temporary de deviations around the rate, for, for reasons we will explore next, the economy would always tend to move back to the, uh, to the natural rate of unemployment. The natural rate was thus conceived as a level of unemployment established as a result of frictions in the labor market. Friedman considered that these frictions could include the distortions arising from the policy decisions which were noted above. The magnitude of the natural rate is not affected by the level of aggregate demand, so it is no cyclical component. Friedman's uh, second ar uh, argument was that the Phillips curve is at best a short-run relationship that can only be exploited through aggregate demand expansions as long as workers suffer from uh, workers suffer from money illusion by confusing money wage rises with real wage rises. In other words, the valid the validity of any given short-run short, short uh, Phillips curve is dependent on the workers assuming that the prevailing rate of price inflation is stable. However, Friedman and others argued that eventually workers would realize that their real wage was being eroded as price inflation outstripped man, money wages growth in light of the expansion of aggregate demand. Thus they, were, thus, they would form expectations of a uh, higher inflation. As a consequence, workers would pull, build these inflationary expectations into their future outlook and, the, and the, uh, pursue money wage increases, which reflected not only the state of the labor market uh, relative strength of demand and supply, but also how much they expected the prices to rise in, in the period. The monetarist argued that if the argument of uh, the government attempted to reduce unemployment met before or uh, below, excuse me, the natural rate, then as the inflation rate rose, workers would demand even higher money wages growth to achieve their desired real wage levels. Ultimately, this would result in a, a rising rate of inflation. And figure 18.4 captures the accelerist uh, hypothesis. The short run uh, Phillips curve are uh, are shown as conditional as a specific expect, uh, expectation of inflation held by the workers. The, su the superscript A e denotes expected inflation. We use the terminology expectations as real uh, are realized to denote a state where inflation expectations are equal to the actual inflation outcome. We start as point A, where the inflation rate is P, and the unemployment rate is at a so-called natural rate of U, or capital U. At this point, the expectations about the rate of inflation held by workers, or capital P, are consistent with the actual inflation rate of capital P. According to Friedman, the labor market would be operating at the natural rate of unemployment whether, whenever inflationary expectations are realized. To see how the accelerationist hypothesis plays out, we assume that the government is under political pressure and concludes that the unemployment rate or capital U is too high. It believes it can use expansionary fiscal and monetary policy to target a lower rate of unemployment or capital U. It also thinks that it can exploit the Phillips curve trade-off and move the economy to point B with a higher inflation rate, uh, capital P. As the cost of lower uh, unemployment, uh, consequently, the government simulates nominal aggregate demand to push the economy to point B. The increased demand to labor pushes up the inflation rate to capital P, 
and money wage uh, rates also rise in the labor market. The accelerationist hypothesis assumes that the price level accelerates more quickly than more uh, quickly than money wages, and as a consequence, the real wage falls. The monetarist re resurrected the classical labor market and uh, market and placed it at the center of, the, of their attack on Keynesian macroeconomics. Accordingly, firms will be will offer more employment because the real wage has now fallen and the demand for labor is an inverse function of the real wages. Why would workers simply uh, supply more labor if the wage, real wage was falling? In the classical labor market, it, it is assumed that labor supply is a positive function of the real wages. So workers will withdraw the labor if their real wage falls. Monetarist approach outcomes that uh, outcome overcomes me, the apparent problem by imposing different expectations on workers and firms. Firms are assumed to always have perfect uh, perfect uh, information about prices and wages, so that the so that so they know the level of uh, actual real wages at any point in the time. However, the workers are assumed to gather information about the inflation rate in a lagged or ad adaptive fashion and thus could be fooled into believing that the real wages is rising because their money wages are rising, when in fact it is falling. This is known as asymm asymmetric information. Thus, workers are assumed to be initially obvious to obl oblivious excuse me, to the higher inflation. That is, their inflationary expectations do not adjust to the actual inflation rate immediately. As a consequence, they mistake the rising nominal wages for increased real wages and willingly supply more labor, even though the real wage has actually fallen. The central proposition of the classical labor market is that workers care about real wages, not money wages. The, acceler the accelerationist hypothesis added the idea that workers form adaptive expectations of inflation, which means that it, may, it takes some time for them to differentiate between movements and money wages and movements and real wages. Monitors asserted that part B of figure 18.4 is unstable, it can only persist as long as workers are fooled into believing that the money wage increases they received are equivalent to real wage increases. But inflationary expectations adapt to the actual higher inflation rate after a time. Once workers increase their inflationary expectations to P, then the short run uh, Phillips curve or SRPC shifts out before because their expectations of inflationary expectations Oh, wait, um, of the underlying rate of price inflation has risen. The labor market will then settle at point C, which is consistent with a new higher expected inflation rate. The path uh, the labor market rate, uh, takes as inflationary expectation adjusts to the actual uh, inflation rate and the SRPC shifts, that is from point B to point C or from point D to point E, when the expected inflation rate has shifted to P, it is an empirical matter. But for monetarists, once inflationary expectations have fully adjusted to the current inflation rate at points C and E, for example, the economy will return to the natural rate of an unemployment or a capital U. For Friedman, the short run dynamics of the labor market were driven by the capacity of the government to fool workers into believing that the inflation rate is lower than the actual inflation rate. As long as the actual rate of inflation is underestimated by workers, the government can maintain the unemployment rate below the national rate by the cost of rising inflation. This narrative see seeks to explain mass unemployment in the same way uh, in the same way. This would occur when the economy is unemployment. The economy is expect, uh, operating with the unemployment rate to the right of the capital U in the figure 18.4. The Friedman, the Friedman, <laughs> the Friedman, uh, the Friedman uh, <laughs> interpretation is that mass uh, unemployment occurs when workers think the real wage implied by a, a nominal wage offer is too low because they wrongly believe that inflation is higher than it is. We slide down the short run Philip curve with the unemployment 
rising above the natural rate, actual inflation below expected inflation, and workers believing that the that the real the real wage uh, offers too low to expect to accept. As a consequence, they start quitting their jobs and re- refuse to take in new job offers or take new job offers, thinking it is better to search for positions which offer higher wages once they realize that they have mistakenly thought inflation was higher than they actually is than it actually is. They start to accept the jobs a job offer at the current wage, uh, current money wages. Level is thus increasing the labor supply and the econ- the economy moves back up a short Phillips curve towards the natural rate of employment, or capital U. Friedman was thus forced to explain changes in unemployment in terms of swings in the supply of labor that are driven by misconceptions of the actual inflation rate. At the empirical level, this theory predicts that quite the, uh, the quit the quit rate, rate, uh, rates there we go will fall as unemployment rise or uh, employment rise. Excuse me. Yet the quit rate is indeed countercyclical. The resulting changes in labor supply will be consistent with Friedman's theory. However, the empirical evidence is that quite rate uh, quit rates are pro cyclical which means that they raise when the labor market is strong and workers feel confident about their chances of re- re- securing new jobs after quitting their current jobs and fall when the labor market is weak and workers fear ongoing unemployment. This is ex- exactly the opposite of what would be required uh, or to, required to sustain Friedman's natural rate theory. American economist Lester Thoreau, uh, Th- uh, Thoreau, uh, yeah, I guess Thoreau, summarized this uh, issue uh, succinctly. It quotes: "Why do uh, why do quits rise in booms and fall in recessions? If recessions are due to informational mistakes, quits should rise in recessions and fall in booms. Just the reverse of what just the reverse of what happened in the real world." The introduction of the role, uh, unquote, uh, the introduction of the role of inflationary expectations in the Phillips curve focused attention on how such expectations are are formed, what behavioral models could be involved to capture expectations. There were two main theories advanced by economists: a adaptive expectations and later b rational. Expectations. Both theories considered considered the formation of expectations to be indigenous to the ec- uh, economic system. That is, developers or developments when within the system depend or uh, determine how workers and firms foresee the future cor- course of inflation. The al- the algebra of the expectations augment uh, augment uh, augmented Phillips curve. Here we present a more analytical version of the Friedman natural rate hypothesis. The original uh, Phillips curve rate uh, related the growth of money wages to the unemployment rate. Friedman claimed that the simply or simple versions of version of the Phillips curve, whether uh, specified in its original form or in the price inflation form overlooked the fact that workers would be considered uh, uh, yeah considered about the growth in real wages concern excuse me about the growth of real wages in other words the rate of money wages growth would be influenced by the expected inflation rate independently of the state of the labor market is con- conjured uh, conjectured uh, conjecture led Freeman to incorporate a term for the influence of inflationary expectation in the wage bargaining process in the wage curve in a Philip curve. 18.5 capital uh, I'm gonna try to read as well as I can anyway. Uh, capital W X, uh, X <laughs> equals A uh, minus B U plus lowercase P M uh, capital P. Yeah, okay. Anyway, the additional term, uh, capital P, represents the represents inflationary expectations that are formed by workers which con- condition the wage mer- uh, bargaining process. We assume that the coefficient, uh, uh, 
lowercase p lies between zero and one, if lowercase p equals zero, then wage inflation will only depend on the state of labor market captured by the excess demand term bu uh, if lowercase b p is equals one then any change in inflationary expectation is passed on fully uh, to wages growth we assume that workers expectations of inflation in period uh, t are our taxes are based on price and uh, information from the previous uh, period t minus one uh, the then bargain for wages growth in turn in period uh, T based on those on these inflationary expectations. The expectations uh, augmented Phillips curve or EPA, or EAPC can be written as P equals A minus BU plus PP or uh, lowercase P uh, in a uh, couple of P. PP, anyway, sorry, anyway, where again, the constant term is A equals A plus Y. In terms of figure 18.4, the inflationary expectation term in, on the right-hand side of equation 18.6 shifts the short run, Phillip, uh, short run Phillips curve. It's, uh, if workers' inflationary expectations increase, then the short run Phillips curve shifts out and vice versa. After the EAP, uh, EPC or uh, EAPC replaced the simple Phillips curve as a main framework for considering the relationship between inflation and, uh, and unemployment, economists began to focus on the value of lowercase p. Many uh, econometric studies were conducted to estimate its value. Why does the value of lowercase p matter? Freeman defined the long run steady state or stable uh, inflation rate to be whether workers' inflationary uh, expectations equaled, uh, equaled the actual rate of inflation uh, at this point. He claimed the economy would uh, be operating at the natural rate of unemployment. In the case, the EAPC would collapse to what it refers to as the long run steady state, uh, steady state Phillips curve. We replace uh, capital P by, uh, by capital P in the equation 18.6 and rearrange the equation to give 18.7 capital P1 minus lowercase p equals A minus BU uh, and a couple of P minus A uh, uh, slash 1 uh, minus lowercase p minus BU slash 1 minus uh, lowercase p. It looks like it's all cases. Uh, circ um, we call it um, cursive P. Never know. This relationship should be examined carefully because it looks similar to the uh, uh, to the short run Phillips curve equation of eighteen point uh, eighteen point four, except the coefficients are now divided by the term I uh, equals uh, cursive P. The negative slope of the uh, the this long run Phillips curve. Uh, minus p or minus b, excuse me, uh, one um, minus p is st steeper than the slope of the short run uh, Phillips curve uh, minus b. The closer up or closer p is to one, the steeper the slope of the long run Phillips curve. Once a once uh, lowercase p equals one, the slope becomes vertical and there is no longer any relationship between inflation and the unemployment rate. In other words, the trade-off vanishes. So this is one of the longer uh, chapters. Nice. Uh, figure 18.5 depicts the two cases. There is a family of short run Phillips curve or SRPC. To are shown, the Phillips curve draws on the assumption that uh, zero is lower than uh, cursive P and lower than one is steeper than the short run curves, but non vertical. It means that in the long run, there is still a trade off between the inflation rate and the unemployment rate, but it is a steeper trade off than. Uh, 
occurs in the short run before inflationary expectations adjust upward to the new infl uh, inflation rate. Long run Phillips curve for uh, curse of P uh, mine, uh, equals one is vertical. This means that this means there is no long run no long run trade off between inflation and unemployment rate then uh, rate that can be exploited by the government. Under these assumptions, the economy always tends back uh, tends back to the natural rate of, un of unemployment or capital U. Once inflationary expectations have adjusted to the actual inflation rate, um, you can now see why the economists embrace the flawed uh, flawed framework where interested in the value of uh, curse of P. The Keynesians uh, a value of curse of P of less than unit. Uh, uh, unity excuse me, maintain these policy uh, position that the government could uh, use expansionary policy and monetary um, uh, monetary policy to reduce the unemployment rate should uh, should they consider should they consider the current rate to be too high. The for monetarist a value of capital of a uh, sorry of a uh, curse of p equals one was constant with their claim that the Keynesian aggregate demand management uh, management framework was flawed and would cause rising inflation should the government try to push the unemployment rate below its natural rate which is which is which is based on inflationary expectations being equal to the actual inflation rate to see how the natural rate of unemployment emerges out of this framework we can uh, solve equation 18.74 long run unemployment rate after the relevant uh, algebra manip uh, manipulation we get in 18.8 .8 section, uh, couple U equals A slash couple B minus couple P um, slash one minus uh, uh, curse of P and slash couple P, which uh, shows there is still a, tr a trade off in the long run between unemployment and inflation as long as uh, curse of P equals one. Once uh, cur curse of P, uh, lower, lowercase p, uh, equals one, long-term unemployment rate becomes uh, Freeman's natural rate, and the equation represents the, co the case as written as 18.9, couple U equals A slash couple P. <coughs> Excuse me. This means that in the Freeman natural rate hypothesis, there are only two specific factors which influence long run of or natural rate of employment unemployment a the rate of on of growth of productivity which captured in the uh, in the a term uh, and b the short term representatives uh, re responsiveness to me of wage inflation to move uh, to movements and the unemployment rate or capital b note that given capital b is assumed to be positive this term a slash uh, the lowercase a slash capital b is positive as a result, the higher it, the, as a result, the higher is the gr uh, growth in productivity. Other than other things being equal, and lower will be the natural rate. Montrose assumed that productivity growth was structural uh, was a structural phenomenon and invariable to aggregate demand policies. It is clear that in the expectations augments uh, Phillips curve framework, the government could only achieve temporary reduction in the unemployment rate below the natural rate as long as it could maintain a wedge between the expected inflation rate and the actual inflation rate. Once the workers' inflationary expectations adjusted, then the trade-off disappeared, and the economy would return to the natural rate of un unemployment. Albeit, albeit the with higher inflation, uh, continued attempts at driven down, uh, continued attempts at dr driving down the unemployment rate below the natural rate would, according to monitors, just result in accelerating, accelerating inflation. Specification of inflationary expectation, adaptive expectation hypothesis. The assumption that workers from their expect expectations of inflation in an adaptive manner, uh, manner allowed the monetarist to conclude that government attempts to reduce the unemployment rate would only cause accelerating inflation, and that the economy would always tend back to the natural rate of unemployment. 
The only way the the government could sustain an unemployment rate below the natural rate using aggregate demand stimulus would be if they continue dro- uh, continually drove the rate of price inflation ahead of money wage inflation, and workers are continue- continually mis- misperceived the true price inflation rate. The adaptive expectation hypothesis is, is expressed in terms of, uh, of the past history of the inflation rate, assuming that workers uh, learned from their past forecasting errors and adapted their price inflation expectations. Uh, 18.10, uh, capital P uh, equals uh, P uh, plus A uh, slash P minus P. Uh, zero is uh, less than A uh, and less than one. The left-hand side of equation 18.10 is the expectation of inflation rate in the next period, T plus 1, and is based on experiences of workers in period 2. Expectation 18.10 has two oh, equations, sorry, uh, 18.10 has two components on the right-hand side. P is the expected inflation rate in, uh, in the uh, current period. Thus, workers use this inflation rate as a baseline to what they think the inflation rate in the period will be. A term AP or uh, yeah, AP minus P captures the forecast error in the current period. Or capital P is the expectation that the workers formed in period T minus one of the inflation rate in period T. The differences, uh, the difference between the expectation and the actual rate uh, that occurred is the size of their forecast error. The coefficient A measures the strength of adaptation to that error. The hyper, uh, the not hyper, excuse me, the higher is A, the more responsive workers' expectations would be to the actual rate of inflation. If A equals one, then the expected inflation rate in period T plus one is, is, is simply the actual rate of re- inflation in period T. Note that even expectations quickly adapted to errors uh, A uh, equals one. If inflation is rising, workers will still make errors in their forecasts year after year, as we will see. This led some economists to reject the, ad- the adaptive expectations hypothesis that Freeman had proposed. The rational uh, expectations hypothesis. An extreme form of monetarism, which began known as new classical econom- economics, uh, uh, posits that no policy intervention from government can be successful because so-called economist agents, economic agents, for example, households and firms, from expectations is a rational manner. This literature, which uh, evolved in the late, late 1970s, claimed that the stimulus uh, and stimulation of aggregate demand saved via fiscal policy would not only be ineffective in real terms, but also highly inflationary. The theory claimed that since uh, economic agents from their expectations not rationally, they would be able to anticipate any, gro- any government policy action and, and, and its intended outcome and change their behavior, which in turn would undermine the desired impact of the policy. Uh, let's see, where was I at? Uh, Okay, there we go. For example, households might anticipate a rise in government spending and predict that taxes would rise in the future to pay back the deficit. As a result, households would reduce their, their own spending to save for the higher taxes. That action would thwart the expansionary impact of the increase in public spending. In this context, monetarists like Milton Friedman claim that the government could exploit a short-run Phillips curve for a time for with an expansionary policy by tricking workers into thinking they, their real wages had been had risen, when in fact their, their money wage increases were lagging behind the inflation rate. The un, an un, unanticipated inflation would then induce the workers to supply a higher quali- quantity of work or labor when uh, then would be uh, for, uh, forthcoming at the so-called natural rate of output, defined in terms of natural rate of employment. Recall that under adaptive expectations, econo- econ- economic agents are playing catch up all the time, so Workers' expected expectations of inflation takes time to catch up with the actual inflation rate. Once they adjust to the actual inflation rate and realize that the real wage had actually fallen, they would withdraw their labor so that the natural labor of output would be restored. 
in the use of adaptive expectations to represent the way workers adjusted to an unchanged or sorry to change circumstances was critical uh, criticized by because it applied an implausible irrationality in a period of continually rising prices workers expect uh, expectations would net would never catch up why would why wouldn't they realize after a few periods of error that they were systematically under forecasting and seek to compensate by overshooting the next period. The theory of rational expectations was developed in part to meet these objectives when forming the expectations economists and economic agents were considered to, to act in a natural manner. Oops. Da, da, da. Rational development parts uh, to meet their objectives with form okay. Considered to act in a rational manner, consistent with the assumptions in mainstream macroeconomics pay, uh, pertaining to Homo economicus. This assumes that economic agents were uh, agents used all the information they were that was available and, re and relevant at the time when forming their view of the, of the future. What information do they possess? The rational expectations wrote uh, or uh, RATEX, I guess, uh, R A T E X uh, hypothesis claims that individuals essentially know uh, know the true e uh, economic model that is driven uh, driving e economic outcomes and can make accurate predictions of their outcomes. Any forecast errors are random. The proponents of, of, of RATIX said that the predictions derived from rational expectations are on average accurate. These pr proponents assume that all people understand the, wait, this, uh, proponents assume that all people understand the economic models that policymakers use to uh, formulate their policy uh, inventions or uh, interventions. The most uneducated person is therefore assumed to have a highly sophisticated grasp of structure or specification of the, ec the economy that the treasury and central bank deploy in their policymaking processes. Further, the, uh, the lay public is, assu is assumed to be able to employ this impressive knowledge to perfectly predict how policymakers will respond in both direct direction and quantum to pass policy forecast errors according to the uh, RATEX uh, hypothesis people are able people are able to uh, in, anticipate both policy changes and their impacts as a result they any pre-announced policy expansion or con, uh, contraction will have no effect on the real economy for example, if the government announced it will it will be expanding the deficit and adding new base money, we will also assume immediately that it will be inflationary and will not alter our real demands or supply, so real outcomes remain fixed. Our response will be sim will be to simply increase the value of our nominal contract contracts and thus generate the inflation that we predict via our expectations. Further, as rational agents understand the, eco the economic models used by policymakers, they can predict a policy even if it is not announced. Rational agents cannot be surprised by, predict pre by predictable policy and any policy formulation formulated on the basis of available data and models used, used by policymakers will for for be foreseen by rational agents. The only exception would be if policymakers formulated policy in an unpredictable manner, one that was not based on data and models. Once or uh, since rational agents are supposed to have and uh, have at hand the same data and models as uh, as wait, same models as those used by pol policymakers, the policy. Uh, to be unpredictable, it would have to be formulated in a random manner. For example, monetary, po uh, monetary policymakers would use a random number for generator to determine whether or where to get money, supply growth rate targets, or, inter or interest rate targets. Fiscal policymakers would use a random number generator to determine uh, where to set 
government spending for the year only in such cases would government be able to fool rational agents but since policy would be silly the government can thus never trick the private sector so long as policy is predictable. The introduction of the rational expectations into the debate thus were a step further than the monetarist who conceded that governments could shift the economy from natural level by introducing adaptive expectations. With rational expectations, this sort of loop pooling eliminate, is eliminated. The new classical economists denied that governments could alter the course of the real economy at all. In other words, there was no, not even the possibility of a short run trade off between inflation and the unemployment rate. Workers would always know the future inflation rate and would build it fully to each round of money wage bargaining. The economy would thus always stay on the same, on the long run uh, Phillips curve. While there are some very sophisticated theoretical critiques of the rota uh, the retex hypothesis, for example, the Sun the Sun Engine uh, Montel de, uh, de Bru or some uh, theorem, which extended the notion of the fallacy of uh, composition, some simple reflect reflections su uh, suggest that the informational requirements suggest are necessarily for necessary for the hypothesis to the to be valid or are beyond the scope of individuals the relation the relative new field of study called behavioral econ economics has attempted to examine how people make decisions and form views about the future the, st the starting point and uh, is that individuals have what are known as cognitive biases, as mentioned in Chapter 8, which constrain their capacity to make rational decisions. The Global Financial Crisis, or GFS, was not the first time that models employing rational expectations categorically failed to predict major events. Uh, Retex-based uh, models have failed to account for every, to even the most elemental macro macroeconomic outcomes over the last several decades. They categorically fail to predict movements, financial and currency, and commodity markets. Rational expectations opposed in mechanical forecasting rule only the individual decision making them. In fact, they, these, and these individuals exist in an environment of endemic uncertainty in which the future is unknowable. As we will see the, the, in the later chapters, ad endemic uncertainty is a major problem facing decision makers of all types of cap in the capitalist monetary economy. Uncertainty about e economic events such as a movement in assets, prices are, or job security may enc uh, encourage individuals to uh, hold money, which is the most liquid of all assets, as is, as is a story of value. And store our value, excuse me. In what in the real world, of course, people have imperfect knowledge of that information is necessary for forecasting and even less knowledgeable of how their choices made on the basis of this imperfect or in incomplete information might impact future outcomes. And we also do not know how we will react to changes, circumstances until we are confronted with them. The nature of, of uh, endemic uncertainty is that we cannot know the full range of options that might be pre presented to us at the time in the future. Um, okay, so let's see, I'm gonna stop right now. You know, welcome back. Uh, we are still on uh, uh, unemployment and inflation theory and policy, uh, chapter 18, 18.4, hypothesis and the Phillips curve trade-off. While ec economists focus on how fast individual expectations might respond to rise inflation uh, and the role that inflationary expectations play in wage and price information, a new strand of liter literature emerged which challenges the monetarist contention that there is no long term trade off. I'm sorry, long run trade off. <coughs> 
between uh, between inflation and unemployment rate. Um, as empirical level, it was noted that the inflation that estimates, excuse me, at the unobserved natural employment rate, summertime, uh, summertime, summer, summer, anyway, uh, sometimes called the non accelerating uh, inflation rate of employment or NERU, which sounds more like a character from Street Fighter, but anyway, which were derived from uh, econ uh, econometric uh, models seem to tra 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 track the actual unemployment rate with a lag. At the time that monetarist monetarism became influential in economic policymaking, unemployment rate were rates were rising due to policy response to the ma major oil prices, price rises in the early and mid 1970s that caused accelerating inflation. We will examine this period separ uh, separately later. The estimates of this natural rate seem to be or seem to arise too, and without any consistent explanation. As an example of uh, figure 18.6, we show Australian Treasury and OECD estimates of the Nehru and the corresponding unemployment rate for Australia from 1960 to 2015. The Treasury estimates end in 2011, while the OEC estimated estimates only begin in 1978. First, why did the Treasury estimates of Nehru, which are meant to reflect structural factors, just so violently <laughs> jump so violently? Excuse me. Uh, 1974, around the same time, the actual unemployment rate rose sharply. This period was highly turbulent. Uh, OPEC oil crisis and market the marked the end of the post-war full employment era uh, when unemployment rates were usually below 2%. You can clearly see that estimated Nehru tracks the actual unemployment rate upwards. No coherent explanation has ever been given to explain that jump. Structural factors tend to impact slowly and gradually. Second, the why are the uh, Treasury estimates flat after, 20, uh, after 1974 and equate, or sorry, uh, and quiet during during uh, different to the OECD estimates, which track the actual unemployment rate. Third, with the exception of 2001, the OECD estimates the uh, the Nehru uh, steadily declined from 1993 to 2007. Likewise, there was a steady decline in OECD estimates of the Nehru for the UK and USA for more than 10 years from the early 1990s. These observations had led economists to question the idea that there are a that there is a cyclical cyclically invariable uh, natural rate of unemployment. It appears that the best estimate of unemployment rate that was consistent with stable inflation at any point in time were highly cyclical since they followed the actual unemployment rate, which reflects reflects the cycle business cycle. Well, there are uh, various exp explanations to rationalize the way the estimated uh, natural rates of unemployment fell over the 1990s. For example, demographic changes in the labor market with the youth cohort, uh, cohorts share and the labor force declining. One plausible explanation is that there is no separate informational content in these estimation, uh, estimates. They should reflect in some lagging, lagged fashion the dynamics of the employment rate that is the high, uh, the uh, hysteresis a hypothesis. This was a new theory that emerged in, to explain the apparently cyclical relationship between the equilibrium unemployment rate and the actual unemployment rate. The early work showed that the increased NERU uh, estimates uh, based on econ econometric models merely reflected the decade or more of high actual unemployment rates and restrictive fiscal and monetary policies. Thus, these estimates were not indicated indicative of an increasing structural in imp impediments in the labor market that were due to, for example, demographic changes which 
could result in an influx of young, unskilled workers into the labor market or rising minimum wage and or welfare distortions, such as the, such as more generous unemployment rates or uh, unemployment benefits. Hypothesis of ref effect is uh, the hypothesis, I'm sorry, uh, hysteresis effect describes the interaction between the actual and equilibrium unemployment rates. The significance of uh, his, hysteresis is that the equilibrium unemployment rate is associated with the stable prices and at point at any point uh, in time should not be con uh, conceived, conceived of as rigid and non-inflationary constraints on expansion, uh, expansion um, expansionary uh, macro, ma macro policy. The equilibrium rate itself can be reduced by policies which reduce the actual unemployment rate. The importance of his, uh, his, hysteresis is that a long-run inflation unemployment rate trade-off can still be exploited by the government, and this will, or this would invalidate one of the major planks of monetarism. One way to explain hysteresis is to focus on the way in which the labor market adjusts to cyclical changes and economic activity. Re recessions cause unemployment, um, unemployment to rise, and due to their prolonged natural uh, uh, nature, the, the short-term joblessness becomes entrenched in long-term unemployment. The unemployment rate behaves asym asym asymmetrically with uh, asystematically, there we go, uh, and with respect to the uh, business cycle, which means that it jumps up quickly, but takes a long time to fall down, or fall again, same depth. The labor market adjust, adjustments that accompany an, uh, an e economy with such, or no, with, uh, with lots of slack, which could lead to hy uh, hysteresis are well documented. Training opportunities are provided with entry-level jobs and to, and to the average skill of labor force declines and vacancies fall, as vacancies fall. New entrances in the labor market force who cannot find jobs are denied relevant skills and socializ socializ socialization associated with stable work patterns. And unemployed workers face a skill absolute Obsolence, uh, both groups need jobs in order to update and acquire relevant skills. Skills uh, experience upgrading, it's uh, upgrading also occurs through mobility, which restricts during, wait, which is restricted during a downturn. The idea is that structural imbalances increase in a recession due to the cyclical labor market. Adjustments commonly observed uh, in downturns and increase, increase increases at higher levels of demand as the adjustments are reversed. Structural imbalance uh, refers to the inability of the actual in unemployment to uh, present themselves as an effective excess supply. The longer that people remain unemployed, the harder it, is, harder it becomes to convince potential employers that they have the requisite skills and, and, and the appropriate attitudes. The algebra of, his, of hysteresis. Here we will learn that if there is hysteresis pre present in the market, uh, labor market, then a long run trade off between inflation and the unemployment rate is possible, even if the uh, coefficient in the aug aug augment of term in the Phillips curve is equal to unity. Uh, these results which was shown uh, was shown in Mitchell in 1987. At any point, oh, let me move this a little bit. There we go. Uh, at any point in time, there might be an equilibrium unemployment rate which is associated with wage stability in that it temporarily constrains the, the wage demands of the employed and balance the competing uh, distributional claims on output. We might call this unemployment rate uh, the macro, uh, macro equ uh, equilibrium rate of unemployment, or MRU, um, abstracting away from other causes of inflation, such as pressure arising from rising costs of resources and other uh, inputs in production, as well as attempted attempts to by firms to raise their market ups markups 
of our cost to increase profits. The MRU will be consistent with price stability. The interaction between the actual uh, and equal, uh, the actual and equal, equal equilibrium unemployment rates have been have been termed the hype the uh, hysteria, hysteresis effect. The significance of hysteresis, if it exists, is that the unemployment rate associated with stable prices at any point in time should not be conceived of as a rigid, non-inflationary constraint on exp uh, expansionary macro policy. The equilibrium rate itself can be reduced by, pol by policies, re which reduce the actual Unemployment rate. Thus, we are we use the term uh, MRU as a non-inflationary unemployment rate, as distinct uh, as distinct from the macro uh, the monetarist concept of the Nehru, to highlight the hyster hysteresis mechanism, such uh, which is driven by the business cycle. The idea is that structural imbalance increases in a recession due to the uh, cyclical labor market adjustments commonly observed in downturns and decreases as high levels of demand as the adjustments are reversed. Structural imbalance refers to the inability of the actual un un unemployed to present themselves as effective ex uh, ex excess supply. To see how hysteresis alters in the Phillips curve, we start the, stand the standard wage inflation equation as an 18.11 uh, couple W equals A minus B and U minus U plus uh, the both Bs. So that the rate of growing uh, growth in money wages in, in time TW is equal to a constant A le less than the deviation of the unemployment rate that it's steady state value, the gap uh, U minus U is just a different way of capturing the excess demand in labor market. If the gap is positive and the actual um, unemployment is above the MRU there, should be downward uh, pressure on money wage demands. Uh, other things being equal. If the gap is, ne is negative, then the actual unemployment is below the MRU and there, would, there should be upward pressure on money wage demands. Other things being equal, the, the additional term captures inflationary expectations as explained in our der derivative De, uh, sorry, der derivation of EAPC. Um, this uh, hysteresis effect, the tracking of the actual unemployment rate by equilibrium rate of unemployment could be represented in a number of ways. In this example, we follow Mitchell, eight, uh, 1987, with, who represents a U as weighted an average of actual income, uh, unemployment, excuse me, rate, rate in the equilibrium rate in the last period. The following model shows the MRU adjusts to the actual unemployment rate uh, with a lag. 18.2, uh, 18.12, excuse me, uh, couple U minus couple U equals, um, I'm guessing Y, I'm not sure. Anyways, equals uh, U and, and mi minus U um, is lower than zero. Yeah, anyway, again, this is, uh, algebra, not my strong suit. Anyway, uh, this says that the current MRU or capital U is equal to its value to, in the previous uh, period, uh, also a uh, couple U uh, plus some fraction of the gap between the actual uh, and the actual MRU and the previous uh, period. And the value of uh, U um, or Y, some of that is anyway measures this, the sensitivity of MRU to the current state of uh, uh, activity if um, then U equals U and the MRU is uh, invariable to fluctuations in the employ employment rate, thus the MRU can be identified with the uh, NERU if substitution for the bracket unemployment term uh, in 18.13 yields the following wage inflation equation or Mitchell in 1987. If the operation of the business cycle leads to a fall in the unemployment rate, then this would uh, this will lead to a fall in MRU, and over time the different the difference uh, between ex consecutive. Uh, move this a little bit. There we go. Uh, where was I at? <laughs> um, consecutive MRUs will converge to zero, 
C equation 18.12, thus in contrast to EAPC, where a rate of unemployment persistently per below the NERU continues to uh, add to from the lower unemployment rate dies away with the uh, convergence of MRU to the lower rate of unemployment. Thus, the lower rate of unemployment is associated with a higher but stable rate of inflation. There is a trade-off, uh, and the higher is other things being equal. The flatter will, will be the trade offer a uh, trade-off between inflation and unemployment. Uh, 18.5 on un underemployment and the Phillips curve. We see, uh, as we saw in chapter five, unemployment has become an increased significant component of labor under utilization in many nations over the last two in the last two decades. In some nations, such as Australia, the rise is underemployment. Oh uh, wait, in underemployment has outstripped the fall in official unemployment. National st statistical agencies have responded to these uh, trends by publishing more, more regular updates of underemployment. They have also constructed a new data series that to provide broader measures of labor wastage. For example, the Australian, uh, Australia's, uh, Australia Bureau of Statistics of Broad Labor. <coughs> Excuse me, under, under utilization series, which is published on a quarterly basis after let's see if we can do this again. Uh, labor wages, for example, the Australia Bureau of Statistics broad labor to provide um uh, labor uh to provide broader measures of labor wages for oh wait. Uh, utilization series, which, which is published on a quarterly basis after the uh, great major recession that uh, beset many nations in the, in the early 1990s, unemployment fell as, as growth gathered uh, pace. At the same time, inflation also moderated, and, the, and this led economists to increasingly question the practical uh, utility of the concept of cyclical variation nature rate or NERU for policy purposes uh, quite apart uh, quite apart from the conceptual uh, dis disagreements this skepticism was in reinforced because uh, various agencies reduced estimates of the natural rate of unemployment that declined steadily through the 1990s as the unemployment rate fell, which you can see 18.7, as the unemployment rate went uh, below each natural rate estimate and inflation continued to fall. New estimates of the natural rate were produced, which showed it had fallen, fallen further. He reinforces this reinforces our conclusion that Nehru estimates have uh, no predictive capacity in relation to the movement between the unemployment and rate and the inflation rate. The question then arises as to why the unemployment rate and the inflation rate both fell in many nations during the 1990s. Also, that some that, do, that what does this mean for the Phillips curve? To understand this more fully, economists started to focus on the concept of excess supply of labor, which is the key variable constraining wage and price changes in the Phillips curve framework. The standard Phillips curve approaches products predicts a statistically significant negative coefficient on the official unemployment rate or proxy for excess demand. However, the uh, hysteresis model suggests that the uh, state dependence uh, in positively rel relative to the unemployment duration and at some point the long-term unemployed case cease to exert any threat to those currently employed. <clears throat> Consequently, uh, they do not discipline, di discipline the wage demands of, the, of those in work and do not influence inflation. The hidden and unemployment are even more dis distant from the wage setting process. So we might expect that short term unemployment is a better excess demand proxy in the inflation of adjustment function than it is the overall unemployment rate. That includes long term unemployment. While the short term unemployed 
may be proximate enough to the wage setting process to infl influence price movements, there is another significant and more, even more proximate source of surplus labor available to, un to employees to condition wage bargaining and underemployed. Oh no, the underemployed, excuse me. The underemployed represent an untapped pool of additional worker which are work, working hours that could be redistributed among a smaller uh, pool of persons in relatively con uh, costless fashion if employers are so desired. It is thus reasonable to hypothesis hypothesize that the underemployed pose a variable threat to those in full employment work who might be better placed to set the wage norms in the economy. This argument is consistent with research in the literal that literature excuse me, that shows that wage determination is dominated, dominated by insiders, the, the employed, who set up barriers to isolate themselves from the threat of unemployment. Phillips curve studies have found within firm, firm excess to isolate uh, firm dominant uh, domains, excuse me, oh no, demand, demand for labor variables such as the rate of capacity utilization or rate of overtime to the more significant as to disciplining the wage determination process than external excess demand pro uh, proxies such as the unemployment, uh, unemployment right, rate. It is plausible that while the short-term employment or yeah, employees excuse me, still pose a more in, latent, uh, latent threat than the long-term unemployed, the underemployed are also likely to be considered an effective surplus labor pool. In that case, we might expect down, downward pressure and price inflation to emerge from both these sources of excess labor. As an example, uh, figure 18.7, shows the uh, relationship between the unemployment or under uh, yeah unemployment rate and inflation in Australia between 1978 and 2015 the, the sample is split into three uh, sub samples the first from uh, March of 78 to uh, September of 83 is defined by the starting point of the most recent consistent labor force data series February of 78 and the peak unemployment rate from the 82 recession September 83 the second period, December 83 to September 93, depicts the recovery phase in the 1980s, and then the period to the unemployed, uh, unemployed peak the following, the, the, the followed, the peak that followed, excuse me, the 1991 recession. The final period goes from December of 93 to September of 2015. The solid lines are simple linear trade or trend regressions. The, the relationship between the annual inflation rate and the unemployment rate clearly just shifts after the 91 recession, focusing, or, yeah, focusing on the dashed arrow line joining September 95 and September 97. This was a period within the Phillips curve began, began to flatten and more uh, move inwards. Even these year, uh, over these years, the unemployment rate was stuck due to a lack of aggregate demand growth, but the inflation rate was falling. This has been explained in part in part by the follow the falling inflation uh, inflationary expectations. The ninety one recession was uh, the nine the ninety one recession was particularly severe, been uh, severe led to a sharp drop in the annual inflation rate and is and what it what it with it a decline in sur a survey based inflationary expectations the other major labor market development that rose that arose during 91 recession was the sharp increase and then persistent of high un un underemployment Firms that shed full-time jobs and as the recovery got underway, began to replace the full-time jobs that were shed in part-time opportunities with part-time opportunities. Even though unemployment growth gathered a pace in, 19, in the late 90s, a majority of those worker jobs in Australia were part-time. Further, the part-time jobs were increasingly of a casual nature. Figure 18.8 .8 shows the relationship between unemployment and, and inflation. The Australian, uh, in, in Australia from, from 78 to 2015, it also 
that shows the relationship between the underemployment underemployment estimates began provided by the Australian Bureau of Statistician Standard nah, the Standard the the <laughs> The statistics, the statistics, I was just say that. Uh, the, wait a minute, I'll just try that again. Remember, my reading is not always the best. Uh, statistics, 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 there we go. Yeesh. Um, and the annual inflation rate for the same period, the equations show, shown are the simple regression depicted in the annual inflation rate for the same, okay, uh, depicted uh, graphically by the solid, by the solid lines. The graph suggests the negative relationship between inflation and underemployment is stronger than the relationship between inflation and underemployment. I mean, unemployment, excuse me. Uh, more de detailed ec ec econometric analysis firm confirms that this is the this is to be the case. The inclusion of underemployment in the Phillips curve specifically um, helps explain why. Low rates of unemployment uh, were not inflationary in the period leading up to the GFC. GFC. It suggests that it suggests that changes in the way the labor market operates with more casual work and underemployment have significance in explaining the impact of labor market on wage inflation and general price level inflation. Conclusion. Uh, in this chapter, we reviewed the three theories inflation, uh, of inflation rate, the determination, namely the Phillips curve trade-off, the expectations augmented Phillips curve and the hyster hysteresis model of the Phillips curve trade-off. We have shown that the expectations augment Phillips curve. Oh, wait. Uh, oh, wait. Okay. Uh, curve specification rejects the capacity of Keynesian uh, aggregate demand management to achieve sustainable cuts in unemployment under the monetarist assumption that the coefficient on the inflation expectations variable was unity. The empirical, uh, the, the empirical evidence has shown the concept of a cyclical, cyclically and variable Nehru, which underpins the monetarist policy prescription. Also, the empirical estimates of Nehru are related to the lagged un unemployment rate rather than structural features of the, of the economy, which are alleged to impose on the sustainable rate and unemployment Nehru. On the other hand, the, hyster the, hyster the, hysteretic, the hysteretic model of inflation has shown that uh, total unemployment is an inadequate proxy for ex excess demand and the inflation model of researchers need to need to differentiate between short-term and long-term unemployment under uh, unemployment and also incorporate uh, underemployment into their excess demand proxy. The demand uh, comp composition of an unemployment over uh, over the business cycle explains why the macroequilibrium uh, rate of unemployment or MRU is cyclical sensitive. <clears throat> which gives a rise to the phenomenon known as hysteresis, both of the uh, Phillips curve trade-off and the hysteretic model are consistent with uh, stimulatory policy leading to lower unemployment and albeit, uh, albeit, yeah, albeit, uh, albeit with a higher rate of inflation. I'd like to thank you for listening um, and going along with me, even though I've flubbed quite a bit during my reading, but um, at least it's all true as far as the book itself goes. Um, anyway, so uh, the next chapter will be 19, Full Employment Policy. Uh, thanks for listening. I uh, hope you decide to uh, subscribe, uh, share, comment, hit the like button and hit the bell uh, and leave and leave a comment if you like. Either way, I uh, hope you guys have a good night, and I'll see you Tuesday. Peace out for now.